God is so close to us. We all come here for about five minutes in the eyes of eternity if we get to live to be 90. And if we're over 40 at the time of listening to this message, we only have but a few breaths left on this planet. So let's use our time more wisely now that we're aware of this mystery. Let's focus more on the things of beauty. Let's focus on agape love. Agape is a Greek word for the highest form of divine, unconditional love of God. In fact, it's the force that holds all things together in our universe. So how do we find this agape love? Well, the answer is quite simple. We must be on the frequency of God to be filled with agape love and to share it with others. And the only way to do that would be by going on a seven-day fast with prayer and meditation. Almsgiving is a very important part of the process. We should not neglect anyone who is coming to us for help. We should help the homeless, the widows, the orphans with everything we can. For it is more blessed to give than to receive. But most importantly, we must pray for peace in our hearts, in our families, on our planet, and in the universe. You have a very unique perspective on the state of affairs with Mother Nature, with our state of spirituality on our planet. Everybody's suffering today. Everybody's in a constant state of fear and almost panic. You were blessed to live in the nature for many years by, your, by yourself, essentially, uh, away from all the hustle and bustle of metropolitan area what would you say because of your closeness with nature if we could hear the language of the trees and mother nature what is she trying to tell us if we could put it in a human format slow down listen just that pay attention and feel the other life on this planet around us including each other um, the Native Americans had a way of saying that the further our feet are separated from the earth, the further we start to separate from each other and from all the creatures on this planet. We've lost touch with being a part of this, of life. And we've made ourselves so distant and separate and out of balance because of this, that we need to find our, back, our way back to being connected again, being part of uh, part of life in a, in a good way rather than the distorted way that we've been living it. Martin, do you feel sometimes that language that do you audibly hear it or do you feel it metaphorically that Mother Nature is communicating to you when you're at your property and you're sitting in, in, in your patio and you're meditating and contemplating the future or just connecting with nature? I think uh, the spirit world and our higher self, nature, talks to us through our feelings. Um, this is the gift of what our feelings really are. Feelings are how we receive messages, how we gather our intuition, how we know things that we can't know otherwise. It's through our feelings. By paying attention to our feelings, we start to find out where we're out of balance uh, or what we might need to do different. Sometimes the feeling can be, sit down, relax, just stop, just take a breath, you know? Sometimes it might be, I need to move, I need to go do something, or I need to call my friend, uh, or I need to, for some reason, do go to this store that I don't normally go to, but, you know, it's hard to say, but it doesn't come in words that we hear with our ears. And it doesn't come to our brain that we hear with thoughts. Our thoughts tend to be pretty distracting to us. It comes in a quieter, 
intuitive form through our feelings usually you know you just have to learn how to ter- interpret feelings that are messages from a part of yourself versus feelings that are just your personality throwing a temper tantrum Martin, do you feel more connected with nature living at your property in, in, in the nature versus if you lived in a big metropolitan area, that's where you, you were originally from? Is there a big difference living where you there, live? There is for me because I'm at a place where I want to perceive nature on more and more subtle levels. So I'll sit out there and I enjoy listening to it snow. I enjoy feeling the music of the wind as it blows through the trees and I hear a whole symphony. But this is very, very subtle. But getting away from the noise of traffic and sirens and things like that is conducive to what I choose to do. However, you can connect with nature no matter where you live, even if you live on a high rise and all you have is a little balcony or the streets around. You know, you look at the canyons in New York and you think, how could you possibly connect with nature there? But you can. Nature's all around. For those who choose to live in a city, um, they have their reasons for being there, and these are good, valid reasons. There's still nature you can connect with, and it may surprise you. It may be a weird bug that lands on your window, you know, or a, a, a bird that nests on the corner of a building, or, or maybe just watching something fly by, but nature's all around. We can find it. And it could be trees, grass, um, wind, snow, anything. Would you say that Mother Nature is in pain because of the human activity? That's one way to put it. Uh, You can use any number of metaphors uh, to conceptualize it however feels uh, appropriate to you. But yeah, uh, we are injuring and our planet but you also got to understand there's a lot of life on this planet many forms of life we don't even know about they're too small to see and all life has feelings in some way or another not exactly the way we do but still does how important is forgiveness for human beings to be able to get past certain trauma that happened in their lives it's crucial without forgiveness you you cling to your pain and it becomes something that follows you everywhere and it it permeates every cell of your body and in time even changes your DNA. You can't you can't move on if you can't let go and you can't let go if you can't forgive. How do we forgive Martin? What's the process? Love. Ultimately love is the answer for everything. Learn to love that which you do not love. That is not easy to do. That is the whole journey of life for most of us. But when you can reach a place where you can love that which makes you want to pull your hair out and scream and possibly even be violent, you'll find that you have gone far on the path toward uh, spiritual oneness. And that sounds all etheric and, uh, and everything, but ultimately that's the answer learn to love and we learn to love by understanding understanding is the pathway through to love we fear what we don't understand if there's something you don't feel comfortable with something you fear something you're angry with learn to understand it and then you'll find that your perceptions change for instance if you're afraid of insects study them get to know them look at them on a magnified level. Notice their mouth parts, how they live, how they go through their lives, what they do. It stops being scary and it starts being fascinating. But that which you understand, you don't fear. Many people in the world, Martin, uh, tend to view love from a biblical or the Quranic standpoint. Agape love is the highest form, they say, of unconditional, divine, perfect love of God that we cannot fully comprehend, that holds all things together in our universe. Would you say that's an accurate description of love? That's pretty good. Um, um, Unconditional love is agape love. And it is the highest form of love. It is the highest form of anything. Um, 
most people's concept of love is very, very limited based on what they can understand and what they've experienced and what they know. The whole journey of life is learning more, learning to expand yourself, to experience more, to feel more, to understand more. And that ultimately leads toward agape love, unconditional love. And how do we practice that love, agape love? There's only one way, and you said it in your question. Practice. Practice it. When you find yourself experiencing anything, ask yourself, what would love do? When you're making a decision or a choice or faced with something and dealing with another person, ask yourself, what would love do? Um, you might find yourself going, well, if I was love, I might handle, I might say this different. I might handle it different. I might recognize that this person's being aggressive with me because this person's afraid. If I address the fears, then everything changes. It's amazing how fast that can happen. So seek to understand and seek to practice love. And you got to know, though, that like when you're practicing and learning any skill, you're going to fail a lot. You're going to go, dope. All right, next time I'll do it better. I'll try again. Do just keep trying. So we're back at proverbial love your neighbor parable. That's a perfect parable. Well, it's not a parable. It's a commandment. It wasn't really a commandment. It was a more of an admonition. Admonition. Right? Suggestion like, here's the answer. When he said that, it was an answer to a question. It's like, how do I get there? There you go. Love your neighbor. Um, ultimately, this is where it leads. And this seems very simplistic and naive to a lot of people. But let me give a, an example. It's like if you ask children, how do we stop the war? The children will usually say, well, that's easy. Let's just put down our guns and shake hands and we'll be friends. And all the adults go, oh, ho, ho, isn't that really cute? How naive, but that's quaint and cute. But in the end, when the war stops, that's what happens. It's just a matter that the adults need an excuse before they can allow themselves to do it. Isn't it one of the reasons why Jesus said, do not forbid them to come to me because for such is the kingdom of heaven. Yeah, children have a, a purity. Uh, they're closer to the source. As they get older, they start taking on the stuff that we taught them, which usually isn't that good. Um, Jesus was very perceptive. Yeah, yeah, we almost have a way of negatively programming the children. Not almost. You want to watch what we, you want to know what we're teaching your children? Watch them play. Watch what they're playing. That will show you what we're teaching them. Martin, what would be an ideal situation, ideal society where if we had a way of, let's say, an eco village or eco community where we could raise our children properly in the uh, principles of, with the principles of agape love, what kind of society would we have then? I think if we would teach our children from an early age about life, uh, about living, about how to work with their bodies and their minds to become healthy, strong people, how to heal themselves, how to eat well, um, how to be psychologically balanced and strong, how to recognize their own fears, how to recognize their strengths, how to share love how to deal with their problems. These things we would teach first. The other things will come as, as, as it goes, but a balanced, healthy human being does better in society, no matter what kind of society that, society that is, whether it's an urban society, a rural society, a technologically advanced society, uh, a nature-based society, it doesn't matter. And many cultures throughout history did focus on that more than we do. We tend to train our children to be workers. Not, well, you can see where that's led us.